Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and we're going to conclude this month with not one, but two Bumblebee figures. These are number 24 and number 25 in the series of studio released figures, and they were sold together as a two-pack at Target stores. Of course, these guys have been off the shelf for quite a while. I just happened to luck upon them at a used toy store. So we have Bumblebee from his appearances in the Bumblebee film and The Last Night. So we're going to take a look at each one of them individually and we'll go from there. Okay, we will go in the order that these bumblebees were shown in their films. So we'll start with the one from The Last Night first. It's number 25 in the series. And of course would be Bumblebee's last appearance as the Camaro until the very end of the Bumblebee film. And of course, we'll take him off of the stand here, and we can take a look at the display, which features a street chase in London. As we can see, there's a fair bit of carnage going on with a wrecked vehicle and got a tire flying through the air. All in all, it's a nice picture. Of course, I never saw the last night when the trailers decided to put more focus on the young girl over the robot carnage. That kind of told me I was not going to enjoy the film, even with me having a free pass to get in to see it. But at any rate, let's get this out of the way here. And we'll take a look here at Bumblebee. This, of course, would be the appearance of Bumblebee's last appearance under the direction of Michael Bay's movies. Which, of course, has been a source of controversy amongst many of the Transformer fans. But we'll, all, we'll let all of you decide how you feel about it in your own way. We won't talk about it much here. At any rate, let's take a look at this Bumblebee's lone accessory. And it is his gun. It's kind of done up like a Cybertronian design, so it has a heavy science fiction aspect to it. and Of course, it's got a little piece of black plastic here that can be bent. Instructions seem to show that it could be placed specifically on one of the arms in a special way, but I'm finding that to be a pain to do, so I just clip it in his hand. If I were to properly display him, I would probably try to figure out how to work it. But at the moment, I don't have such luxury to be able to put him out on permanent display. Plus, can you imagine how to, having to dust around all these things? Whew! I'd need a curio. I have no idea where I'd find a good one like that. Alright, let's take a look at this Bumblebee's articulation. And he would have what we would expect out of a Studio Series release. His head can be turned from side to side, and it is on a bit of a ball joint, so it will look up and down a bit. His arms can be stretched out about so far, and the arm can rotate at the shoulder all the way. Just some of the car kibble tends to get in the way. His arm can be bent at the elbow 90 degrees, and he does have a swivel at the bicep. So this Bumblebee has G.I. Joe Battle Grip. Bumblebee can be twisted at his hips, so it shows he has some dance moves going there. He does have a slight thigh cut, but again, a lot of the car kibble gets in the way. 
You can raise his leg up at the hip 90 degrees, and you can bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees. Plus, his ankles are articulated, so you can adjust the position of his foot. So, that does give us a fair amount of articulation to go with this version of Bumblebee. I guess he's overexcited from being on camera again. Stay. Okay, we're going to transform this version of Bumblebee. The first thing we got to do is we got to turn him around here to his backside. And we fold up these small pieces here to help complete the look of the windows. Just like that. Then we're going to come around back to the front for his feet. We pop the feet free, and then we're going to fold them downwards like so. Just like that. Then we take the wheels that are down here, and you're going to fold them upwards. Kind of adjust his legs, adjust the feet accordingly. Because we want to get this in and flush with the body, like that. Now once, of course, they're up like that, you're going to come here to his upper thighs where we'll rotate, pull out and rotate the rest of the rear fender. As you just saw, they pop off very easily, so do be careful with that. Hopefully this will reattach with little to no trouble. Ah, there we go. Got it back in. There's a little post that's right above the tire, and it should connect into an extended hole on the fender, just like that. Come around here and do that to the other side. Now these, even though I bought this at a used toy store, these this was never opened, so I'm the first one to open it. I know there's going to be some purists out there that are going to curse my existence, but this is a review channel, so we do have to open some of them. Alright, now, once that's done, get everything back into position where it was so we can continue. Now, we fold out these pieces here on his inner leg and kind of snap them into place so that they'll form the rear of the car. We'll then fold in these pieces on the front of his legs and then we connect these bits down here together and that'll truly form the rear of the car. A bit of a fight. There we go. Got it in. Alrighty. So now, now that we've got that done, shift these back. So we're going to come up here and fold out the entire windscreen assembly. Fold it out so the windshield locks up here with remnants of the hood and just keep unfolding out. Top of the car and with a little bit of effort. The back windshield. Now, once we've gotten all that folded out, we come up here to the front and we're going to fold up Bumblebee's chest so that it'll form the front of the car. Like so. Kind of stretch it out a bit. Because then the next thing we're going to do is shift this forward 
so that it'll fit in between the gaps of his chest and complete the hood of the car. Just like that. And then, of course, we can go all the way to the bag, get it set up so that it connects at the back, too. Just be gentle. The amount of pressure you put to lock it in. So we put a little too much there and everything popped free. So do be careful with that. All right, once we got that in place, we come up here to the front, we're gonna straighten his arms, because we're gonna fold the hands inwards, just like that. And we turn his arms at the elbow, like so. So the armor faces us. And then now we're going to work the arms underneath by shifting them at the shoulder and also rotating them so that we can get it underneath. And then of course some of the side armor, some of the side armor here, there's a little tiny post and it should line up and go into a groove here in the remnants of Bumblebee's body. Do the same thing with the other arm. Uh, once again, in you go, just like that. Then now that we got that done, We'll fold these sections with the front wheels up towards the front so they should lock in and connect and then of course close up the doors and help align the side windows with the back windscreen. Of course, they may have detached a little bit during the transforming process. That does happen. It's a bit of a pain. But once we get them in, we will complete the look. There we go. Now we got that one in. Well, at least I thought I did, and then it popped free on us again. Mm. There we go. Now we got it. There's Bumblebee in his alternate mode from the last night. A 2016 Chevrolet Camaro. And how well does he roll in this mode? Not like you'd expect for a Camaro. He goes pretty fast. Alright, let's take a look at the other Bumblebee. Okay, and here's Bumblebee from his appearance in the Bumblebee movie. Which, of course, it harkened back more to the Generation 1 day. So his body is going to look more built out of a Volkswagen Beetle. And of course we remove him from his stand and we can see that his background is set up to look like Charlie's Garage. Where Bumblebee spent a fair amount of time. And all in all it is a nice representation of it. Of course we don't have any shots of Charlie in here but... Now well, we can't have everything and probably draw oh, probably trying to draw or include her in there would probably lessen the impact 
Especially since there is another studio, Bumblebee, that does include her, so... I guess if you want Charlie around, go get that version. I did see that version over at the used toy show store, but that one had been open, so I was a little leery of buying it. Just in case somebody didn't re-include all the pieces. I hate that. Alright, now this bumblebee does include a fair amount of pieces. Starting with, we'll take a look at his wrist blade. It's a nice bladed weapon. And it can be attached to his left arm. Like so. Bumblebee also comes with this little Gatling gun. Now this one's meant to be plugged into his arm, so that means that his right arm is detachable. So do bear that in mind if you do buy this toy loose. And that arm can be removed. Plus, we also have Bumblebee's armored face. And of course, now does that go on? Well, his face plate is also removable. Just remove it like so. This has got a single tab there in the back, and of course, spots where the eyes go through. And then you just attach the other face plate to it. <laughs> On you go. And then now with this look, Bumblebee is ready to kill. At any rate, let's take a look at Bumblebee's articulation. Now the head face piece came off, but with it you can see the ball joints, so that tells you that the head can look up and down. It should also turn to the side, but it is rather difficult due to the some of the car kibble behind it. Let's just put his regular face back on here, because this looks, that just looks creepy. His arm can be raised out to the side about so far. And it does rotate at the shoulder all the way. Again, you have to watch for the car kibble to get in the way. He can bend his arm at the elbow 90 degrees. And he does not have a swivel at his bicep. No, wait, there it goes. Just had to work it loose. He does have a swivel. So he also has G.I. Joe Battle Grip. You can twist Bumblebee at the hips a bit. You can spread his legs apart about so far. He has next to no thigh cut. Excuse me. Excuse me. Allergy season here in Ohio, folks. You can also raise his leg up at the hip 90 degrees. His knees can bend the wrong way and he can almost kick himself in the face. Or he can bend them down the other way. And it be not as impressive. Okay, before we transform Bumblebee, we need to switch everything out. So give me just a second and we'll get him ready. Okay, I've had a little trouble working with Bumblebee. Getting him into this other mode, so try to bear with me on this one, folks. I also want to point out that the left arm has the... Bad of the, the swivel and the bicep, the right arm does not due to the fact of having the added mechanism to swap the arm out. 
so do bear that in mind. Alright, to transform Bumblebee, the first thing we gotta do is we do have to separate out the VW headlights there on his chest, get them separated. Then we're gonna turn him around to his backside. We'll fold out the set of fenders. Like so. And while we're at it, we will fold up the last of the window and get those all connected so they all form a solid piece. Then we're going to come down here and unfold all of his top cover. So we got the windshield along with the top of the car. And then you fold out the back end of the car. Just exactly like that. And now we come up front to his arms, and you're going to raise his arms out to the side like so. Then we're going to grab the section of his chest and rotate that. And that should rotate the entire arm assembly, which will include the doors. Now, once that's been done, you can fold his hands inwards, like so. Then down here, we'll turn him around at his hips. Now we come down here to his feet. They kind of want us to raise his feet out a bit, like so. They seem to indicate there's more ways to shift his feet, but... Oh yes, his feet do fold. Maybe that was my problem, I just wasn't seeing it. But we'll see how this works. Let's kind of right now we don't need that, so fold them back in. What it is basically they do want us to get his feet in like that into the knee pads. Now, once of course they are like that, you are going to put his legs together. Because they've got opposing posts. Then once you've got them together, you're going to fold them upwards. As you'll see there, they now form a nice post. And then that should go into a hole right at his hip. The trick is, is keeping it together while we move it up and get it in. Because it does like to come apart. Okay. It would also help if we had the backside at the bottom of his legs attached to get the rear of the car together. And we'll retry the legs again. Since they all seem to shift. There, hopefully we've got them in. 
Nope, apparently we don't again. Excuse me. Okay, now we got it in. So hopefully we're getting this right. Now, now that we've got that in, we are just getting the arms, the arm units set straight. Because we're going to close the doors. There's a small post right here out of trans clear plastic on the door, and it should connect to a small notch in his upper thigh. So just work with that and get it into position. Try to get both of them in position. So it is a bit of a challenge. And to get it to do it without moving. Okay, now that those are in position, we're going to take his arms and you fold them downwards at the shoulder so that they go down like so now once those are down we're gonna fold the front wheels in because they've got a little hole here and it should line up with the post in his shoulders to get everything connected there's one You can see that one's lined up. That's good, just like that. And of course, once you've got that done, we can get the headlights locked in, the headlight sections locked into position like that. Then they want us to turn the arms at the bicep. Okay, apparently the right one does turn. It's just very, very stiff. Yeah, they don't want to just turn there. They want you to turn it at the shoulder. So that, that way the arms can be folded down into the underside of the car. Pop the door free on me again. There we go. Get it back in. Now, once that's in place, we can bring down the front, bring down the car on top of it. Try to lock everything into position. And then, of course, we can come back here and start bringing up the rear of the car. And get it secured. I don't see why I was having so much trouble earlier. And there we have it. Bumblebee is now in his 1967 Volkswagen Beetle mode. Oh, and apparently, according to the instructions, there is storage underneath him. where you can attach the wrist blade. You can attach the gun. And even the face mask can be attached underneath. Just exactly like that. So it's like neat, you even have storage for all of Bumblebee's parts. Quite a nice little feature here. And of course, how does he roll as the Volkswagen? Rolls pretty much just as good as the Corvette. So now we get down to my thoughts. I think this two-pack is an interesting little set. 
Yes, it does give you two bumblebees out of it. And it pretty much appeals to all the fans. We get the old school fans who want the Beetle, and we get the newer fans that want the Camaro. All in all, both toys are pretty good. As I said, I did have problems initially with the Beetle, but I guess I just wasn't reading the instructions right, so I'll take the hit on that. That was me. That's all me. But all in all, both of them are pretty neat. They both have nice accessories for them, so it does leave them open for a lot of posability and display options. I do like the fact that on the Bumblebee version, the Beetle, that you can store all of the accessories in the car mode and it doesn't impede even the functionality of driving. So that's kind of a nice extra feature. I kind of wish the gun could have been put in the Camaro as well, but, well, beggars can't be choosers. But all in all, this is a nice little two-pack. I managed to get it for about the price of two deluxe figures, which is what both of these are. So, wasn't too pricey for me. If you can manage to still find one of these out in the wild, I would say consider getting it if you're interested in one or the other. They would both make a nice addition to Aya to anybody's collection. And at any rate, that concludes our review of the Bumblebee 2-pack from the Studio Series. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do remember that if you like the content that we post here on this channel, please do remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, I don't know what we got coming up next month for the month of August. A lot of it depends on if we found any of the any more legacy toys or heck even any of the new studio toys. We're having a hard time finding things here. If we can't find enough to review in the month, well, we'll dig into some from the past. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.